Time now for the ridiculous, and tonight it's another bleak milestone at the White House office of the best and the brightest. President Trump's intended nominee for the Federal Reserve Board, conservative pundit and self-destructing mansplainer Stephen Moore, today withdrew his name from consideration, which is a Washington euphemism for his Senate confirmation was as likely as Sarah Sanders passing a polygraph test, or Sarah Sanders admitting she was wrong, or Sarah Sanders showing up for a press briefing. It's, it's dealer's choice. Moore, who, full disclosure, was formerly a CNN contributor, and yes, I know, slow clap for us on that one, today sent the president a letter that reads in part, quote, the unrelenting attacks on my character have become untenable for me and my family, and three more months of this would be too hard on us, end quote. In hindsight, probably wasn't a good sign that Senator Lindsey Graham, a White House ally who'd probably be willing to drive the getaway golf cart after President Trump shot someone on Fifth Avenue, said the other day that Moore's nomination would be, quote, problematic. Now, before you take out your clarinet to play a funeral dirge for Stephen Moore's career prospects, consider that what he claims are attacks on his character are actually examples of reporters reading his past writings. CNN's K-File recently uncovered articles that Moore wrote as an adult that were littered with sexism and degrading references to women. Moore said he was joking, but these weren't like high school mistakes. These weren't college yearbook idiocy. He was a full-grown adult writing in major magazines. You can go to CNN.com, hold your nose if you want to read the details. For his part, the president tweeted today in part, Steve Moore, a great pro-growth economist and a truly fine person, has decided to withdraw from the Fed process. Truly fine person. Doesn't that kind of ring a bell? Oh, yes. Moore is a member of a very, very elite club, one of the very best the president promised he would hire. We're going to make America great again. We're going to use our best people. I'm going to get the best people. We're going to deliver. We're going to get the best people in the world. We don't want people that are B-level, C-level, D-level. We have to get our absolute best. We're going to use our smartest and our best. We're not using political hacks anymore. It's a sophisticated chess match, but I have the best people lined up. You need people that are truly, truly capable. We have to get the best people. That's true. Yeah, the best people. A sophisticated chess match. It seems like the president was missing a rook or two when he held that job fair because it's not just Stephen Moore. There's the president's other Fed favorite, ex-pizza kingpin and failed presidential candidate Herman Cain, whose past sexual harassment allegations doomed his chances pretty much from the get-go. There was uh, HHS Secretary uh, Tom Price. Loved private jets almost as much as he loved taxpayers funding them. There was also the Interior Secretary, Ryan Zinke. Remember him? He apparently thought he was Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth because he ordered a special flag to be raised whenever he entered the building. Yeah. Smooth-skinned EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt. He used his government security detail to seek out his preferred brand of lotion from the Ritz-Carlton. The list goes on. Man, can you imagine being on that security detail? Uh, Mr. Pruitt on some lotion from the concierge desk. That would be kind of demoralizing, I would think. Rob Porter, accused of abuse. Michael Flynn, lied to the FBI, but he was a good guy. Sean Spicer, cartoonish disaster and a liar verified in the Mueller report. Oh, Scaramooch. I mean, look, how much time we got? Because we could go on. The irony is as thick as swamp water. The president and his allies fuel conspiracy theories about career government workers. You know, people have dedicated entire careers working behind the scenes, not talking about it on TV, not being pundits. Actual people who become actual experts in their sometimes very obscure but important fields working for the government. Those people are hacks, according to the president and Alex Jones. They're deep state, which is why it's a good thing. There are so many jobs in various agencies that have gone unfilled. Don't worry about it. Sleep well at night knowing only the best and brightest are at work in the White House and on The Ridiculous.